why is this relevant to everything we're talking about? Because at one simple level, not only do spread out cities fragment social connections, they also have a massively negative impact on energy consumption, a key issue for us all. Just remember this, that 75%, and this is part of our research, of cities around the world now consume uh, world energy and contribute 75% therefore to CO2 emissions. So a small impact on that makes actually quite a big difference to the global equation. And basically air conditioning, uh, lighting and uh, using of cars rather than other forms of more sustainable transport are why we cities consume so much energy. Therefore the density aspect is extremely important. If you have a very tight city with a lot of people like many of the Indian cities are, in that sense, it's highly efficient. If you have a spread out city like London or more so um, without a good transport system like Mexico City, it is far less efficient. So part of the work that we've done is to study densities across all these cities. Now, we thought New York and Shanghai were pretty high. Look at the four Indian cities. Again, I'm not gonna go into detail, but is it interesting to see the difference in sort of scale of densities that we're talking about. When cities spread out, as in Sao Paulo, and use up valuable natural resources, which could be the mangroves of Mumbai or elsewhere, you really consume energy, uh, potential uh, resources like water and others, and really end up killing a city. I've touched about governance. We're going to go back on this on uh, tomorrow. But let me just refer to the fact that we studied for the first time actually in a very graphic way, the difference between how different organizations uh, at central level, government level, at state level, and therefore regional level, city level, and uh, ward or more democratic level are organized. This is not to say one is better than the other, but London, interestingly, and I see the Secretary of State for London, uh, Tessa Zhao, who's just walked in, who's therefore one of the boxes up there, um, is this rediscovering the relationship between central government and a real metropolitan government with a mayor who is elected by the people, still with a strong democratic base in green at the bottom. We studied a number of cities and we have found in India that that system is very different. And I think the impacts of that different system is very important to understand. Let me rush in the last few minutes left to a few conclusions about what works and what doesn't. Certainly in London, we found that the mayor, because he's responsible for the whole metropolitan area and not a region, has been able to make some very big decisions. He's decided that no future development, even though London is growing at quite a pace, can happen outside that boundary. It all happens within the city. Therefore, development is all concentrated on industrial land, ex-industrial land, sorry, in the middle of the city. London is growing for that reason. All the new housing, and this is a mayor's policy, has to be done in such a way that half of it, 50%, needs to be affordable. He was even able to implement, that's why you see Ken Livington smiling over there, this congestion charge, because he's making quite a lot of money through this process, reduced traffic by 20%, and on the whole made London more livable, and also responsible for a new plan which will make London probably one of the more advanced in terms of uh, carbon dioxide emission. We've heard from Rakesh, and we will hear from Enrique, the great things that actually have been done in a city which is poor and is difficult but actually nobilized through the intervention of uh, different public systems, cycleways and others. Meanwhile, Mexico City, faced with exactly the same problems, builds double level highways, an issue that you know here is very important and very popular. Now the question to reflect on is that while petrol is cheap in some of these countries, that's okay, but this is what happens. This is what happens on the double motorway uh, in Mexico City. It seems to be permanently blocked and doesn't really resolve the issues. Now, the last two issues I want to talk about are to do with the physical fabric of city and the key issue of housing. This is an attempt in Mexico City to deal with the housing problem. Now, this is exactly the point that I was trying to raise, that if you want to link the social to the physical and understand the implications on society, we all know in this room what it means to live in a place like this without social facilities and others. And I think as architects and as planners and as um, uh, city mayors who are here, one has to perhaps really think about whether the future of a city like Mexico City is correct when you have an environment like Santa Fe where all the middle classes are moving out 
uh, to an area like here, or perhaps a more integrated and subtle approach where you have some more subtle housing, schools, and other facilities which are more integrated with the grain of the surroundings in the old Santa Fe is a better solution. I think that will be an important thing to discuss when we come to Daravi. South Africa, Johannesburg is living through a difficult cycle that Lindsay Bremer will talk about, with the city center becoming void, with people leaving the city center because of fear and crime. Not a problem you have at the moment in Indian cities, but moving out to cities behind walls and gates. This is happening in Indian cities, even though there isn't an issue of crime. And I think the implications in terms of the design of housing needs to be understood, but there are some success stories. There's some beautiful, very successful housing right in the middle of Johannesburg in one of the toughest areas where now people from mixed income uh, are able to live right next to the services they need. Now here I want to be slightly controversial as I come to conclude, Howard. This is an aerial view of part of your city here in Mumbai. And on the far left, you see some white structures, which seen from the air could look like industrial elements of some sort or another. You go close and this is what it is, and many of you will recognize it as part of the important project of relocating slum housing, some of the pavement dwellers and others as a result of the important infrastructure projects which are happening. Now I have to question whether with all the intelligence that we have, creating housing of the sort with eight story housing with little public amenities is the solution to the future of this city and I hope we can perhaps collectively talk about other issues. Because I'm convinced, and this is where I really do want to conclude, that unless one understands the grain of the city at a physical level, the structure of the spaces and the buildings, and make them seamless and connected, perhaps like in New York or other cities, it is very, very difficult to create cities which are integrated, uh, connected, and sustainable for the future. Thank you very much.